Uh, hi everyone, this is Muhammad Akib. I'm presenting my um, uh, Eden World Club article uh, for the second module. The article I've chosen is the work, is uh, the movement disorders of the stroke in adults. This is a review article, although this is a slightly old article, but it serves the purpose which I wanted. The reason I chose the reason I chose this article was because of my background in stroke and having seen patients with patients with acute stroke with rigidity. Uh, although, this is a, although this is a less common um, discussed topic, but however, it's, it's relatively prevalent. Um, in the introduction part of the article, uh, it, they talk about the uh, epidemiology of the, uh, of the movement disorder in stroke. Usually it's about 1% um, uh, of uh, acute strokes have some kind of movement disorder problems. Uh, most cases are due to involvement of the amygdala artery or posterior cerebral arteries. Um, trajectories. Um, hemorrhagic stroke seems to be more common as compared to the ischemic strokes and causing movement disorders. Um, and usually, it's a self-resolving condition. Ninety percent of the condition resolve uh, within uh, six months. Then it goes on and talks uh, the individual uh, common condition, movement disorder conditions in stroke. Um, starting with the most common one, which is bellism and chorea, which account for about forty percent of the cases. Um, they merged both together because there was a significant overlap between the two. Um, um, <coughs> Bellism usually uh, improves over time and evolves into a chorea. Um, apart from uh, and, and, and hemibellism and hemichorea is the most common of these. Apart from hemibellism, you can have a normal of one limb bellism or two uh, um, or multiple limb um, bellism. Um, most of the patients uh, would have hemibellism as well as um, chorea um, and they can have other abnormal uh, and dyskinetic movements as well. Uh, localization is uh, uh, usually uh, for hemibellism is subthalamic nucleus however the other nuclei can be affected as well and for hemichorea it's more commonly uh, protum and other um, um, in, in the natural history wise, um, hemibellism onset is usually acute um, and 80% of the uh, time it happens straight away or it can be delayed from days to weeks up to five months um, uh, and with time this usually is, um, uh, slow down and they have got a usually benign course and recover spontaneously. Hemichorea on the other hand has a slightly delayed uh, onset uh, within a few days. Uh, it can also interestingly happen as a manifestation of transient ischemic attack as, uh, as well. Prognosis depends on the location of the lesion and the cortical lesions uh, usually resolve, um, uh, are more likely to resolve, uh, usually in 85% of the cases. Basal ganglia lesions, about half of them, that them will resolve, while the STN lesions, uh, if isolated, uh, does not recover. Um, one more important point, if somebody comes with hemichorea, then you have to think about vasculitis and other vascular pathies um, because uh, these are potentially uh, uh, treatable uh, conditions and also um, uh, the treatment is different. And then it talks about the very important differential of hyperglycemic chorea, um, which is a differential diagnosis of uh, chorea due to stroke. Um, uh, this present this can present as a hemichorea as well as can have abnormalities in the MRI with the hyper intensity seen in the basal ganglia. Um, <clears throat> however, both of these uh, uh, features resolve after the correction of the hyperglycemia. This is thought to be secondary to non ketotic hyperglycemia uh, and is attributed to hyperosmolarity. It's thought that age individuals with the Asian descent are more likely to have uh, hyperglycemic chorea. And treatment for hemibellism and hemichorea is usually dopamine receptor blocking drugs like haloperidol. Um, and usually half the patient will respond to it and will recover within 3 to 15 days. Other options uh, include uh, benzodiazepines, tofuramate, tetrapanazine, and valproate. Uh, in severe and persistent cases, sometimes bottom impact injections or surgical options um, are, are tried. The next second common uh, uh, movement disorder presentation in stroke is dystonia. 
um, which affects about 20% of the cases. Um, it can be either focal or hemidystonia. Uh, stroke is the most common cause of hemidystonia, accounting for about half of the cases. Um, and if somebody presents with hemidystonia after age 50, then it's most likely stroke. The pathology is in the putamen, um, and uh, however, other early insights can be involved. Um, onset of dystonia is usually delayed by about a few months, uh, ranging from three months to three years. Um, and usually, dystonia follows hemiplegia when your um, motor recovery starts, then you develop dystonia. Um, <clears throat> most patients who develop hemidystonia are young, um, which uh, suggests increased susceptibility in a young brain. Usually, um, dystonia stabilizes uh, with the recovery, however, it, never, uh, it uh, rarely goes away completely. And treatment uh, wise, uh, usually, dystonia is um, poorly responsive to oral medications. Um, and some people have benefited from uh, any anticholinergics, benzodiazepines, beclofen, and dopamine, and uh, depleting or blocking drugs. Um, however, partly in toxin injection works very well. Um, um, <clears throat> in uh, post-stroke uh, dystonia uh, uh, when it's uh, focal and functionally disabling. Um, in more disabling cases, um, uh, um, DBS uh, or other surgical options are, uh, uh, are, are, are give good results, um, but they come with a uh, complex procedure and the side effects. Next condition they talk about is myoclonus and asterixis. Um, myoclonus as, uh, can involve uh, oh, can evolve due to um, stroke affecting multiple areas of the brain, starting from cortex to basal ganglia to midbrain to cerebellum. Um, uh, asterixis um, is thought to be secondary to dysregulation of the tracts of cerebellum, brainstem, thalamus, frontal lobe system. Uh, Microlens affects arms, legs, face, and voice. The treatment uh, voice usually does not require any treatment for both uh, microlens and asterixis. Um, uh, however, if uh, it starts to interfere with the functional abilities like eating or writing, then you could we could try GABAergic medications. In others' experience, combination of uh, clonazepam and levetiracetam uh, works the best. Uh, Asterixis uh, wise, uh, this is the treatment uh, available so far. Um, it talks about the Holmes tremor, um, which we, uh, 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 which is which is also called rubral midbrain or cerebral outflow tremor, and uh, the location is um, uh, in the brainstem. Um, uh, or it can also be due to cerebellum or thalamoglians as well. <sighs> Onset is usually delayed from weeks to months. Uh, treatment options are similar, uh, medical treatment options are similar to essential tremor. Uh, however, uh, it responds poorly uh, and uh, uh, if disabling, uh, sometimes it needs surgical interventions. Symptomatic parietal tremor, um, you know, stroke is the most common cause of it. Um, it's usually associated with other signs of cerebral dysfunctions or uh, abnormalities on the motor learning tasks and brainstem reflex testing. Um, the characteristic, oh, the, the, the unique feature of um, uh, this tremor is that it persists and varies in, in rate during sleep. It's usually delayed. Um, and usually, if it's due to stroke, it does not dissolve spontaneously. Um, and treatment wise is not uh, needed most of the time but sometimes sometimes people develop that audible clicking sound which sometimes can be disabling and if that happens then bot um, bottling and toxin injections into the soft palate works very well ticks have been reported in few patients following strokes um, and they usually respond to alpha receptor agonist or receptor and dopamine receptor antagonist if needed then the lastly, um, uh, uh, they discuss about uh, vascular Parkinsonism, and they mention uh, acute Parkinsonism following an acute stroke, um, uh, uh, and then they talk about uh, vascular Parkinsonism in slightly more detail, uh, which is secondary to small vessel, uh, so chronic small vessel and cerebral vascular disease, causing subcortical damage. Um, 
it usually pre presents in a classic um, uh, rigid echinetic syndrome which is bilateral symmetrical bradycardia and rigidity with uh, gait involvement um, it can also have a, a lower half parkinsonism as well where they have rigid and bradycardia affecting the lower legs and, um, with gait issues however the upper limbs are spared resting tremor may be present but it's not uh, and that pronounced uh, and it can respond to levodopa and dopaminergic drugs um, um, but um, the response is not as good and is usually short-lived. Um, then the common scenario we, we see in the clinic is uh, when somebody comes with vascular Parkinsonism and we wonder whether they have got uh, idiopathic Parkinson disease. It can be difficult to clinically differentiate between the two at times um, and, it, and, and studies show that uh, up, up to 15 to 30 percent of the patients with vascular Parkinsonism are in uh, sometimes diagnosed as Parkinson disease. And then they talk about uh, this term of pseudo Parkinsonian signs, which is the first time I've heard where uh, the signs which look like Parkinsonism uh, but they are not Parkinsonism signs. Um, uh, which could be present in, in uh, vascular Parkinsonism and we confuse them with uh, uh, Parkinsonian signs and, and label them as RPD. Those signs they mentioned is action tremor, myoclonus, sorry, paratonic rigidity, apraxic slowness and apraxic gait. Um, this was an interesting uh, concept for me and kind of makes a bit more sense. I think I need to read a bit more about it. Uh, at the end, it describes about, uh, sorry, it gives a nice summary table of uh, all the conditions. So for me, uh, I thought the article was simple and with a plain language. Uh, the discussion was to the point and overall I thought it was well summarized. Um, I thought there was some repetition at times. Um, I think the anatomy and pathophysiology could have been explained a bit better. Um, and uh, acute onset Parkinsonism. Um, um, they only mentioned one line. I thought they could have explained it more on that. That's about it. Thanks, guys.